So I'd like to welcome you to Spiritual Gallery. Thank you so much for participating today. I want to share a little bit about myself and about the work I do. Um, I'm a spiritualist, which just simply means that I talk to spirits. So I can talk to your spirits or your higher selves and also your friends and family in heaven. And the purpose of today is to connect with your friends and family in heaven and relay information from them to you. And that happens a couple different ways. Sometimes they just kind of connect with me and then they give me information that I'll be able to share with the group. And then it would be your responsibility to wave me down and let me know that that information is matching for you or for someone that you are looking for in heaven. So again, sometimes they just pop in. Sometimes when I'm talking to you, if you're not connecting, if we're not connecting with the person that you're looking for, if we invite them directly, then they'll also have the opportunity to connect that way. I do wanna explain that our friends and relatives in heaven, their personalities don't change. So if they were loud at the family party, you can expect them to have a, quite a bit to say. If they were quiet at the family party, don't expect them to all of a sudden have a bunch of things to say. If you had to ask them questions to kind of get them talking, that's what you're gonna to have to do here today. So my connection to them isn't really dependent on how well I can or can't communicate with heaven. Everybody has their own personality. Some people are more chatty than others. Some people are very creative in their expressions. Some people are more shy. And when they touch the earth vibration, that's, that's how they should come through is the way that they are. Um, let me admit one other person. Okay. So I do ask that for the people that you would like to connect with today, that you send them a little prayer and you kind of invite them to join us. And please um, include God in our time together today and in your prayer so we know that we're only reaching out to the places and the people that we want to connect with. One of the things that can happen today is that your spirit self can connect with me as well as your friends and family in heaven. And that works a little bit differently than if I'm talking to your friends in heaven. If I'm connecting with your spirit, every single thing that your spirit shares with me about you, it should make sense. It should feel accurate. It should settle truthfully every single time. If it does, that's how I know that I'm connecting with your spirit properly. For anybody in heaven, because they don't have a physical body, the way that they're going to connect is they're going to share information with me about a lot of different things. It can be something about you. It can be something about them. They can share some information that's random. What I look for when I connect with the people in heaven is, is the information that they're sharing with me, does that make sense to you? No matter what it is. So if it does make sense to you, then I know that I'm connecting with them and translating them for them properly. During the time that they're sharing their messages, they will ask me to ask you random things that you're going to wonder, what the heck does this have to do with anything? It doesn't. It only serves as a way of me and them kind of double checking that we're translating their messages accurately for you. So I know a lot of you today, and even if I've connected with your friends and family in heaven before, when I get into the space where I'm connecting with spirit, anything I know about you humanly or from a previous session, that's literally gone from my brain. So all of the questions or the things that they choose to use as confirmation of their presence, that will feel all brand new to me. So bear with me. If you do want to refer to some period of time where you and I have connected with your friends and family, then just let me know that so that I can ask their spirit and my spirit to give us a little bit of updated information or to try to kind of refresh my memory to that. No question is off limits. What I do find in um, a group session is that the people in heaven aren't gonna go very deep, deep, deep into healing things. They just wanna check in with you. If you have questions, they'd love to ask them. Sometimes if I feel that they're kind of stepping back a little and we're very deep into a particular topic, they may step back from that a little because it might be better um, for that particular um, thing that we're talking about that you do that in a one-on-one -on -one session or in a more private matter. So I will let you know if that is something that's happening. So please feel free to ask or share whatever you like. 
Um, what I like to do at the beginning is just kind of say a, a couple prayers for my friends and family that I like to join me in an event like this. And you can do the same thing at that time. And then we can begin our time together today. We have about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, and I'm really gonna hope that everybody gets a message today. We're really gonna shoot for that. So I'm gonna take my moment, please take yours and then we can begin. So I don't know who this lady is for, but I, I am, I'm drawn to somebody, but I'm not quite sure if I'm drawn to an area of a screen or actually the person. So I am looking at a grandmother who is the life of the party. I mean, the life of the party. She's going to dance at the family wedding. She's going to really participate. What that tells me is she could be somebody's mom, but she's also a grandma. So she has grandchildren. And when she presents herself, she presents herself as a grandma before she presents herself as a mom, which kind of tells me that her grandkids are so important to her. So she also tells me that May, June, and July, there's a birthday or an anniversary in her family for somebody that she loves, which means you would love them too. And um, when she passed, I feel like she possibly was either intubated or really couldn't eat. Like maybe they withdrew food and drink, uh, but she wasn't eating as much. Um, does that make sense for anybody that's with us today? You can just kind of wave at me or come off of mute and let me know that. This would be a female in the family. I believe this is connected to potentially dad's side of the family where this grandma would be. And she was very outgoing and boisterous and loves to party. And she would be the fun, cool grandma that like even my friends would want to hang out with my grandma if that's the personality style. So does that make sense for anybody present here today? Is that a no? Is that a yes? Mary and Kyler, you're laughing a lot. Is that connected to you? I can't hear you. You're on mute. Okay, now you're off. It very, It could very well. It could very well and, be. And, and how would that be connected and to you? How, how does that, that make sense for you? How does that make sense for you? Uh, it, was my, it was my dad's mom, and she was a party. She was the life of the party. She was fun, but she's been gone a long time. And when she passed, did she have something wrong with her, her throat? Was she intubated, or did she stop no. eating her at all? Her was she intubated? that I don't know no I, I was I was younger then so no I, I can't I can't do that but she died in her sleep so I'm not sure how that happened she had diabetes that might okay. not be her okay. oh no it's oh, it's no. her is somebody having a birthday in um yes or July July it's a birthday and anniversary it's her her and her husband's anniversary is July 3rd and mine's July 5th my birthday Okay, I'm thinking that that is your grandma and she is kind of joining our session today, like rushing in, like she is rushing into the party. She does give me the information that you can confirm. So that tells me that she's present. She's not alone. She's with a man that would be able to salute me. So can I ask if there's a military man that would be with her? And that could be a son, a brother or a husband, anybody working in the military police or the firemen. Um, and yes, does that make any sense to you as well? Does that make any sense as well? You know, I saw you a couple of years ago and you brought up this man who's saluting that's around me and I don't know who that is yet. I haven't figured that out. Someone's been over my shoulder and I don't know. I don't know who that person is. And was either there, of your grandfathers? Her, actually, 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 wait. Her, her oldest son did serve, but he didn't, like it wasn't a big, long time, but he was wearing a uniform. He did wear you okay. okay and can i ask he's passed away correct yes and can i ask if his death was a little bit more tragic like i feel more compromised in my passing i can't breathe very well and i have a lot of pressure through the chest heart and lung area did he have a heart condition or a lung condition or was he in an accident no no it was um it was brain i, I know he had a brain tumor so i don't know how he actually died do you know if that was cancer that spread through his body? He did have cancer, yes. 
because I feel like if it was in the brain, that was the last place it went to because he's nodding his head and giving me an idea that he is um, the person that we are talking about. So that's okay. his mom. So he would be with his mom. And that is something that he, um, that she feels very happy about. Are you looking for your father though? <laughs> yes, I am. Because your grandma and that would be your uncle then. I'm really hearing myself in the background. Can you guys hear me twice? Twice. What would that be from? I'm just going to ask your dad to hold on one second. It could be my mom in the background. She was always loud. Let me try to change this. Okay. okay. Are you still hearing me in the background? I'm hearing you, but not in the background. No. Oh, great. Okay. Me one time. Everybody's on mute. I don't know why it would do that. I'm not on mute. Is that, should I be on mute? I don't know how, it could be yours, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. We're just going to keep moving forward with this and we'll see when I get to the next person. But when I connect with your grandmother and she wants to continue the connection with you, she does make me recognize that you do want to talk to your dad because she's kind of pulling a gentleman through and coming in with him holding her hand. So I am assuming that is your dad. Um, when I connect with your dad, I'm really, really, really tired. Was he really highly, highly medicated when he passed? He was really, really, really sad. He died of a broken heart. Okay. He was really, okay. really sad. And when you say he died of a broken heart, what's listed on the death certificate? What? Because I'm so... Oh, he had a heart, he had a heart attack. He died, he died because my mom was sick. He died because she was terminal and he couldn't handle it. He died before her two weeks, two weeks before she died. Okay. I need to double check that that's your dad. Can I ask if your mom or your dad had any mobility issues, any swelling in the legs or the feet? Uh, any reason your dad would be showing me some compromise uh, walking around? No. It was my mom that was having a hard time. Okay, that's good. That still makes me understand that I'm understanding this man because he said you, him or your mom, which means that your mom is coming too. So do you have your mom's wedding ring and engagement ring or are they glued together? I have them, yes. Okay, um, that would let me know that your mom is present. When I connect with your mom, I feel really, really nauseous, but she says her stomach is all better. Is she having some issues with her stomach or her digestion or any cancer or medication that would make her sick? Yeah. Or yeah yeah she died of colon cancer okay so i do have both of your parents then um when i connect with your um hold on when i connect with your mom she is letting me know that she's a principal spirit guide and guardian angel to you she's connected to every one of your points of energy in your body which are called chakras so when you're listening to your inner voice that's you listening to an already had conversation with your mom. So she's the one, she's the spirit guide that helps you help you. Your grandmother actually stands up above you, the fun lady, and she helps you help others. So that tells me that you are also the life of the party and the fun one. Um, is that also true about you? Oh, now you're muted. So hold on. Oh, I never have this many difficulties. Yes. Can you yeah. Yes. So because she says that she helps you help others. So when she helps you help others, it's kind of in that fun thing. So you are the person in your group of friends that get the party started and people are happy when you show up to their party. So your grandma helps you help others. She also says that you're a rescuer. You're the best friend for everybody. You'll jump into the fight with me if I need you. So you're a rescuing type of personality. People kind of depend on you for you to have their back. Is that true? Because that's what your grandma, uh, that's what your grandma is saying. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. And then your dad is a spirit guide of divine timing and protection. 
So don't worry about being late. Don't worry about being early. Whatever time you get there is fine. It's all in divine timing. So he needs you to know that you don't have to rush around. And your uncle, your grandmother's son, that is the military man that was saluting. He's not a spirit guy, do you? But he hangs out with your grandma so much that he's around when she's around. So he's just letting you know that he's around. And you have a dog that's alive, correct? Oh, yes, I do. Because when the dog barks, he's barking at your uncle who wears his uniform and I think it freaks the dog out. So when the dog just goes like crazy for no reason, it's because the uncle is in the uniform and it like it freaks him out. So that's how you know that your uncle is around, which really tells you that's how you know your grandmother is around because she hangs out with him. They hang out together. Um, your dad says he's doing great. And he's by like nature. He's he's like outside, like in the woods. Did your dad hunt or fish or nature guy? Or is he just talking about you? Do you have like a summer home? Because it's part of his heaven and feels like that's how he constructed it. Yeah, no, he wasn't, but I was. I am. And I've always, he's been always by water. And oh. we've always been in nature. He wasn't a hunter but he's a nature guy, you buy the water all the time and you are the outdoors person. So your dad hangs out with you. And if I pay attention to what he's showing me, he's showing me nature, outdoors, summer home, lake, woods, stuff like that as being his heaven. And he, uh, from what you're telling me, he's not that nature person you are, but that's his heaven, which means you are his heaven. And that's how he made his heaven. So you're obviously the apple of his eye. He says he loves you. They will be here the whole time. Um, I want to ask, and this, go, this question goes for everybody because I think they might be transitioning me to another person. Did somebody have a blanket made for a family member who passed away with their clothing or their t-shirts or anything. And um, that includes you, uh, Marianne, Kyler. I just wanna ask if that's something that you did for your mom or your dad or any of your family members in heaven. No. Okay, does anybody else here have a memory quilt or a memory blanket of somebody in heaven that some, memorabilia like that was made um, for them or from them? Is that a yes? Is that a no? Nobody? My mom made a pillow out of his sweatshirts. Okay, yep, that would be what I would be looking for. So let me, and anybody else? Is that true for anybody else? No. Okay, Trisha, then it is obviously for you. So let me just see who of your family is present with me. Who was the pillows uh, made for? Whose clothing were used? Were those Allen's? Yes. Okay. And I know I love you and I know you and you're like my best friend, but uh, I should feel some pressure through the chest, the heart and the lungs if I'm talking to Alan. Is that correct? Yeah. He's already saying happy birthday and trying to give me a bouquet of flowers for you because I know your birthday is coming in July. And so he just does that and kind of hands it to me so that I know to say that to you. Um, but he is present. He said two days ago, he was whispering in your ear. I'm not sure what he was whispering in your ear about, but he says you have you heard him or you told him something and he was trying to respond and he thinks you received the response. He also says when you were receiving it, you were looking outside. So there you were looking outside, like out the window or something. Um, also, I want to ask if either Alan or your dad had a shotgun. My dad. Because your dad then is coming in now. Uh, because I do, I, I have Alan there, but then Alan is like pointing at a shotgun, like on a, like on a shelf, like mounted on a shelf, you know? And well, he's then, that's Alan. That's Alan downstairs. Alan has a shotgun downstairs mounted on the wall. Right. Okay, so that is still Alan. I still see your dad over here though. So I have to, I should know this and I don't, I should know this. Dad was in military, correct? Correct. Okay, and then um, one, two, three, four, five. Are you looking for five people? Alan, your dad, are you looking for three more? 
And yes. who wore the baseball hat all the time? Alan. I know Alan did, but oh, not, do Alan, not Alan or your dad. Out of, I know they did, but I'm looking for somebody else, male, who wore a baseball hat all the time as well. Julian. Snook. Okay. My Hold brother. On. I'm trying to get him to give me some kind of confirmation that that is him. Did he lose his eyesight, his hearing, his memory? I'm all yes. My crown. I'm all yes. Here, what happened to him? He had a brain tumor. He died what? of a oh, I was about that. Okay, I, oh, I do. That is snuck. Okay, I do remember you telling me about that. That's okay. He's my Did godfather. Look at his lungs. Me. Did it move to his lungs also? We think so, yeah. Because okay. it just shut him completely down. And is he the one with the really, really big feet? <laughs> no. <laughs> Who had like a size 13 feet? Holy moly. That could have been Bob. That could have been. Or what's the deal with Bigfoot? Bigfoot? Yeah. No, I have to think about that one. Wait, do you have Alan's shoes? Yes. <laughs> Are they out? Like you could see them if you walk in your room or yes. they're accessible because I, I think I'm just supposed to be looking not so much at the size of the shoes, but that the, but that you have his shoes. Is like, it cause I wear, it's probably because I wear his slippers. And they're too big. <laughs> oh, that makes sense. Okay, that makes that makes sense to me. So I have Alan, I have your dad, and I have Snook, and a lady that really, really likes my rosary because she prayed the rosary every single day. Well, both of your parents are Hispanic, but it's the Spanish grandma. I want to say she has Maria in her name, and I know it doesn't sound like it's unique because all of us Spanish have a you know, a Maria grandma, but which one is Maria something? That's my mom's mom. And what is she, Maria? And then what's the next it's, name? It's, it's Marcella Maria Duque. Okay, that, okay, because I'm supposed to get both of the names like that. Um, so Maria is the second name, not the first name. So I also have that grandma present. That grandma is a spirit guide for you, very much connected to your solar plexus or your self identification. Was she the encouraging grandma? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like more, in, and I love your mom, but more encouraging than your mom, like just very uplifting and always thinking you're perfect. Yes. Okay, that grandma is such a spirit guide of like self-identification and the honor you have for yourself. Alan, as you know, is your spirit guide of emotional support. Your dad is your spirit guide of divine timing and protection. And we spoke about all of this, but do you have three questions you want to ask them today? I want to know from dad about mom. Okay. Because she's having a rough time. It's his birthday tomorrow. So we're going to go to the cemetery. And he said he'll meet you there. I figured. He's <laughs> all you about party. You, but, you know, they don't live there. And so he said he'll meet you there. Um, and he has a big smile on his face. And you're probably stopping beforehand. What are you stopping to get for him before you go to the cemetery? Flowers. Roses. So he is going to be there and we'll try to give you a sign. And I'm looking up at the sky. So I'm thinking it's like a bird or a hawk or something. Okay. Um, that he is acknowledging and I'm asking about your mom you know and so he shows me you know we're human and we're spirit right so when I look at people I see their human self and I see their spirit self and so they're kind of intertwined with one another when people begin their journey uh, toward heaven, 
you'll see a little bit of like separation like that, right? So then what starts to come forward is more the soul. What starts to stay in the background is more the human. And that's what they're showing me for your mom. Like she's, there's a, a distinction is happening between the body and the soul. So that her journey is now guiding her home in that heaven realm. Um, and they don't tell me when somebody's gonna pass but they do tell me if someone is in that, uh, like they're, they're on that path now, which means that everything that happens now is for the purpose to get there. And that's what he's showing me. So the brain is a little bit of concern. Um, is she forgetting things or are you yeah. noticing if she's forgetting to eat or forgetting the things that you would do in a normal day. I feel like she stretches for the information. And um, your dad is telling me that. She is a lot now. Um, one of the things that Alan says is, like he gives me this feeling like you might not, if you bring your mom to live with you, it's, like an acceptance of her journey home. And you might be feeling that. You might be wanting to think she's okay or you can get, you know, she can be alone a little longer, but I'm feeling like it's coming to the point where someone has to be with her on more of a regular basis. Okay. Did anybody play baseball a lot or was a big baseball fan in the family? And who would that be between Alan, your dad, or Snook? Alan and my dad. Like, would they watch it on TV? Yes. Well, then that's a good enough fan because that's a boring sport to watch on TV. <laughs> um, so, but they, they're kind of using that as their confirmation that, um, that I'm understanding them correctly and I'm translating for them correctly. Yeah, Alan and I would go see the White Sox, but he we would always watch the games on TV. Great. Mary and Tyler, your, um, your dad has a, a, like a, a beer, but it's in one of those German pint glasses, and it's like bubbling over, you know, the foam from it. Would your dad want to have a beer like that? Because he, he's telling, he, he literally picked it up, took a sip of it, and was like, oh, always cold. And then he said that right as I was right as I was talking to Alan. And I'll tell you why, because Alan turned around and looked at her dad picking up this huge pint thing and like he made a reference of it. So I don't know what it has to do with Alan, but Alan is the one that was like, oh, that looks good. So I want to ask you, Marianne Kyler, does that make sense to you that your dad would would have that? Oh, you're, you're muted. We can't hear you. I asked to unmute. Nope, still can't hear you. Oh, I Hello? still can't. There you are. Okay. Yeah, the dad and I, we were drinking buddies. We meet a couple of days a week and sneak out and meet for beer. So, yeah, yeah. That is, that was my thing with my dad. I saw okay. Donald. Oh my God. Okay, that's perfect. That gives us good confirmation. But really, Trisha, Alan turned around and looked at it. Can I ask you if there is anything connected to him with a big German pint drinking beer glass or like a tall one? This tall one would be a rum and coke. <laughs> okay, so it does, and he was just noticing that this guy has this, so um, I am also, and I don't know if you're doing this, but are you taking a, like, a weekend road trip or going somewhere for the yeah. weekend? Because Alan is packing a suitcase. He's going with you. Where are you going? Just nearby. We're going to go touring part of the Indiana Dunes. Okay, are you going for the whole weekend, or...? No, the only one going for the weekend is Kristen. Kristen's leaving. Alan is packing suitcases to go away for the like the weekend or a short like road trip. Where is she going? They're going up to Michigan. Are they driving? Yes. 
okay, because he's going on like a little road trip or something <laughs> for a few days. I thought you were going, but if Kristen is going, could you just tell her her dad is going with her on that on that road trip? So that's mm -hmm. awesome. Um, Everybody will be here during the whole time that we are connecting, but I want to know who recently bought a house or who's getting ready to buy a house or who's selling a house. That would have happened within the last year. Anybody buy or sell a home or a property? I'm selling. I'm selling. Oh, God. I am. Uh, I'm selling. And when are you selling? I've, I've had it up for a little while. We just we just sold my parents' house a year ago and I was trying to sell right now. I'm in process. Okay, it probably, I don't know if you want to do that now or you kind of want to wait till February. You might get better money in February for your house. I don't know why, because I don't know anything about all of that stuff, but yeah. that is something that they are talking about. Someone just and said that to me. Okay. okay, all right. Okay, um, Alan is bowing his head and when somebody does that in heaven, that's gratitude. And I know he's telling me that he's so thankful for the business and for how you've grown the business. And he wants to acknowledge you and Kristen and Matt for that. And he's saying, thank you, thank you. And it's interesting because he says, thank you um, like this. And that's like a sign language thing. And that is because he's doing that. It tells me that you might be second guessing yourself when you think you hear him or you perceive him, but you are hearing him or listening to him. So he says, don't doubt yourself. It's not your imagination. It's really him. Okay. And then they'll be here the whole time. If as we're talking, you guys are um, thinking of questions or having questions for them. Molly, I want to ask if you're looking for a gentleman in heaven that would like, that has like kind of dry humor. Like I want to laugh. And I don't know if he thinks, I don't know if he knows he's funny, but he's funny, but I don't know if he knows he's funny. So he feels like a dad or a grandpa based on the position that he's standing next to you. His hand is on your shoulder. And that's traditionally how they talk about dad or grandpa. Um, he tells me that he has a namesake, so he's named after somebody or somebody's named after him. And if I had to pick a sport of choice, it would be football. That's what he would want to watch on TV. And I feel like he is the personality style. Like he's very encouraging. Um, like he'll be your cheerleader, like doing that. Is your dad here on earth? He is. And what about his father? Is there any namesake for one of your grandfathers? Are they named after anyone or anyone in your family named after your dad? Um, not my, my maternal grandfather is a namesake. We, I have an uncle and then cousins. It kind of carries all the way down. Okay. So the grandpa that has a namesake is your mom's dad. Correct. Okay. So was he also connected to the military or would he be proud of somebody in the family in the military? And was he was he in the Marines. Was he was in the Marines. Oh, mm -hmm. I was going to be in the Navy or the Marines. Um, okay, Naval Force, but that's Marines too. So I understand that he is present with me. Um, actually, did he have a military burial? Because he is handing me the flag. So did he have the military burial and did you guys get a flag? Yeah, actually, my husband took it because nobody in our family wanted it, and we just received it back framed and everything. Okay, that is, he is, I have to tell you how, like, joyful this makes him that you have the flag. That's the thing he's talking about. It tells me, A, that I'm connecting with him the right way, but I wish you could feel what I feel. There is this level of pride and gratitude and, like, excitement in my heart that goes connected to you having that so he says thank you and um the way he says like it's nice to be remembered in that way like that means something to him to be remembered in that way is what he talks about um he's walking kind of slow but i don't know if it's him who's walking slow or he's trying to bring in this lady who's walking slow and she feels like she loves you a whole bunch. This is like 
probably a mom or a grandmom, um, but you're the best thing since sliced bread. So you know this lady would be a mom. Is this your grandma? Did you have a grand? Are you the are you the oldest? I'm not the oldest. No. Are you the baby? I'm, I'm the second oldest in the family. Okay, then you're this grandma's favorite because if you're not the oldest and you're not the youngest and you're being put up on this pedestal, then you and one of your grandmas, your mom is here on earth, true? No. Oh, I, I don't know if this is your mom. Nope. I do feel like this could be your grandma, which, so you and one of your grandmas had a very, very strong connection. Is, mm -hmm. is that your mom's mom? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I have such a draw to your mom, but I don't think this is your mom. Um, but this lady like adores you. So if, if I sat with the rest of your family and I said, oh, I think you were grandma's favorite. Oh my goodness. I probably would not have any Everybody would be like, yeah, that's true. Is that true? Like everybody would agree? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I dropped the mouse and I broke a whole thing over here. Um, but she is kind of letting me know that. So that is the lady that I'm connected to. And when I asked her, well, what happened to you? She said, oh, I died. So I want to ask if that's her personality. She's not giving me any <laughs> symptoms or feelings. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I know she's over there. But the way she said it was kind of cute. And so that would mm -hmm. more describe her personality than mm -hmm. anything else. So, um, so she's not going to share that with me and doesn't even really want to focus on that at all. <laughs> Do you have a flower garden or is that connected to your grandma or your mom? Because your, your uh, grandma is trying to hand me a bunch of flowers and they look like they were grown. Like I didn't go to the um, florist. My mom, well, my grandma loved flowers. Absolutely loved flowers. My mom loved planting flowers and okay. taking care of them. Okay, so this is the way she shows me. First, your grandma shows me all these beautiful flowers and like I'm smelling them. But then she says one of them had a garden. So it kind of makes sense because your mom planted them, but your grandma loved them. And she's the one that's actually holding the flowers that were grown, they weren't purchased from a florist is what she's saying. And then with all of that, um, I believe that your mom is talking to me about my heaven arm. Who got a tattoo in honor of your mom? I don't know. If Does anybody in your family have a tattoo in honor of someone in heaven? Your mom is talking to me about the tattoos I have on my one arm that are connected to family in heaven. Um, I don't know. Nobody? No, not to my Is mom. anybody in the family an artist like to draw or paint? Uh -huh. Who is that? Because here I have 48 tattoos. I have a lot of tattoos. To me, they are art. So if they show me, and this is my favorite art arm, but it's also my have an arm. So if somebody didn't literally get a tattoo for your mom, like in her honor, then it means that she wants me to talk about the artist. Who's the artist? Who paints? Who does that? Who is that? Um, my sister and my sister-in-law are both artists. Okay. Then I'm supposed to include them and make sure that I say hello and that I, that, that they know that mom is also connecting with them and sending love to them are there five in your family and that could mean that you have three kids you and then your husband or does your mom have five kids she's I think she's really talking about your family you your husband and your three children is that have three children yeah. okay um so she just sends a lot of love and wants you to know that she's always around and you nailed some recipe of hers so do you have some recipe that other people have tried to make, but you nailed it? Or is that one of your sisters or your sister-in-law? Like I, she wants me to say like, way to go on the recipe. It, you nailed it. Who, who did that? I don't think that was me. I don't know. What, what kind of recipe was it? Like a baking recipe? Like it's, no, it looks like it's like um, rice with like, and if this matches for anybody else, that's perfectly fine too. It looks like a chop suey or a beef stroganoff or a beef stew. I don't know. Nope, doesn't ring a bell? No, no, okay. not at all. That Let was definitely not you. something she would cook. That's okay. Let me ask you this question. Um, when your mom passed, did you not get a chance to say goodbye? I did not. 
So I have a great connection with the people that we're connecting with, with you in heaven. And it doesn't make logical sense that then all of a sudden the communication drops. Your mom is trying to tell me something about a beef stew recipe. You nailed it and you don't know what I'm talking about. You don't have a break like that once you're connected to somebody. Once I'm connected to them, it's like if you're sitting in front of me and we're just having a conversation. For, so for the person in heaven to give me what I like to say is like wrong information, it shows me that there's a break in communication. That is their way of telling me that you didn't get that chance to say goodbye or you didn't make it in time or you didn't get to say the things that you needed to. Um, your mom doesn't want you to worry about that if you carry that with you, that you weren't in the room or you weren't you know, by her side at that moment because she is your principal, main spirit guide. There's not really a goodbye because they're part of your everyday. They're connected to all of your chakras. And so she just wants you to know that there wasn't a goodbye because there will never be a goodbye with you. You'll be with your mom and she's still with you and she swears by it. So you're the one, she says, in the family amongst her children that can translate for her. You know what mom would have said. You know what, you're a truth speaker. You're going to say it and you're going to say it. And that's just who you are. And if somebody wants the truth, they need to talk to you. If they don't talk to you, they don't want the truth right? You know mm -hmm. this about yourself. Is this right? This is correct. Yes. Yeah. So your mom kind of helps you with that stuff. And, and so she's your main lady and she just loves you so much. And she shows me a little medallion of the blessed mother. Do you have a little medallion of the blessed mother or did she, or was she like a rosary praying lady? Um, I don't have a medallion of the blessed mother. Um, she was not a rosary lady. My grandma was a rosary lady. Her mom? My mom. Yeah. Your mom's mom. My grandma, my mom's mom. Okay. That's perfect. Cause she's been hanging with us too. So that's, that, that's just anybody that we're connected to for you can confirm. So don't forget to say your prayers. Your grandma carries them to heaven and they will still be here as well. I do want to ask if anybody came to the gallery today to talk to their pet. There is a dog that is bouncing around that really wants to make sure that he is recognized. This is a boy dog. He's a medium to bigger dog. And he came for the sole purpose of connecting with his mama. So who here today specifically came because they want to talk to their dog? Okay, so I want to ask you, Kara, uh, dog, boy, what, what size, uh, what, what's your dog's name? Luca. Okay, and did he have like uh, any breathing issues? Like he's giving me, um, like I feel him from here, his throat all the way to like the top of his belly. So was something going on in this area or why would he show me that as predominant? He um, had cancer in the abdomen um, and we found it when it was too late. And it started crawling up the rest of his. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was in the spleen. Okay. And then can I ask you if October, January or June is anybody's birthday or anniversary, whether they're here on earth or in heaven? There's a man that hangs out with your dog. And that's the man I'm trying to connect with. So are, is your grandfather on your mom's side in heaven? Yes. Okay. Do you know, did he or his family like grow up on a farm or like have a lot of land? Because the dog hangs out with, I think it's that grandfather. Mom, can you help me out here? Well, um, oh, well, she can go back to her own computer. That's probably she's why on her phone. She doesn't know how to unmute. I can't unmute. Oh my goodness. Okay. I am. A, yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, you can just sit there with your daughter. Y'all can be on one screen. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I want to ask you about your dad. Um, did he live on land or have a farm or 
was he always outside walking like this dog is always with him because he walks all over this land so the dog likes to hang out with him but that would have to make sense somehow for your dad my dad my dad loved the great outdoors he was always if he if it wasn't fishing it was walking hiking yes (laughs) okay so your dog is hanging out with your grandpa and they are together because he's always outside he's always on this land and and he loves it and he's feeling great but he looks like he's about four your dog so he's feeling young and has he been gone two years yeah (laughs) Because by the end of the third year of his absence, he'll be coming back. So you'll be, he should find you. Usually when they come back, they find you. So you could be scrolling through Facebook and you'll be like, that's my dog. Like, or you'll, somebody will be like, hey, you want this puppy? Or they'll follow you home or something. And so I am having an understanding that he says he's coming back. And when he comes back, he's going to be like a fat puppy. So what, like, like meaty, like a meat puppy. What kind of dog is this? He was a chow samoyed mix. They're big, right? Because the size, like, it, this looks like he's got some meat to him. Well, he, well, he's, he's fluffy. Fluffy. Yeah, I'm going to take fluffy because he looks like he's this fat puppy. Like, yeah. but if it's all hair or fluff, then yes, I yes. Because when he would get wet, he was like a skinny drink of water. It's like, where did you go to? Yeah. <laughs> So he wants to come back. So he should be back by the end of the third year that he's been um, missing. And do you have a cat at home right now? Yeah, we have two. <laughs> okay, because he says that when he comes back, he really hopes he gets along with the cat. So you must have a, a rebellious cat and a nice cat because he's only concerned about one cat. Oh, he's not concerned always. about two, but he <laughs> says he hopes he gets along with the one of the cats. So you must yeah. have like a, a little shithead cat. That's good. Be- <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, your dad uh, is a spirit guide of divine timing and protection for you, mom. And he's also very protecting of you. Kara, can I ask if you do spiritual things? Do you do a lot of spiritual work or do you focus on that type of thing? Because your grandfather, when he is your protector it's not like he's well he will try to make sure you don't get in any car accidents but he's basically making sure that no negative energies come into your spiritual work Mm -hmm. so what are you doing spiritually that he's like um protecting you from anything negative that could get in so he's like your he's like your shield to anything negative on the other side or in Mm -hmm. the occult or so what are you doing? What kind of spiritual work are you doing? What are you diving into? Um, well, we've been doing Qigong classes. And then I was thinking about um, doing my Reiki certification in the near future. You should do your Reiki certification. That's excellent. Everything you're doing. When you're done with the Qigong, are you going to start like Kundalini work? <laughs> don't know so don't don't do it because i mentioned it but you do have a very very strong kundalini energy so maybe in your practice you'll kind of be led in that direction i think i might be the first time you're hearing it but i think you'll hear about it from others Mm -hmm. a couple times like you're going to start to hear it it's going to start to come into something you see on youtube or somebody says something but it really looks like you might be heading in that direction. So I'm getting a lot of feeling from your spirit to say to, yeah, do the Qigong, do the Reiki certification. Somewhere along those lines, you're going to end up doing something with Kundalini energy. So I think that that's the regard that your uh, grandpa is telling me that he protects you in. Um, Do you live separate from your mom? Because you're not supposed to for quite some time yet. Um, How old are you? (laughs) No, I'm kidding. (laughs) No. (laughs) How old are you, Kara? Uh, I'm 24. Okay, because I still feel like you're going to be there for a little while. 
I don't, I don't feel you going anywhere. So uh, there might be some ideas like, oh, I'm going to go get my own place, but it still feels like it's halted a little while. You have other things that you're taking care of right now and that you're focused on. And so your grandfather is like really encouraging that. And then can I ask if your grandmother is also there? And mom, do you have all of grandma's stuff, all of it? No. Who uh, has all of your mom's stuff? Um, my sister, but my, my mom is still alive, I believe. Okay, you believe. <laughs> I believe. <laughs> Um, long, long story short, um, I have had no communication with my mom or my sister in probably about two or three years. Um, I don't know. They don't return calls. They, they're out of state. My sister and I had a disagreement and she has um, not allowed me to speak with my mom since. I'm sorry, and I believe that your your dad is very sorry. Yeah, I, I that I am sure. Yes, One of the things that I was going to tell you, which I think I have to modify my description, because when I asked you about having all your mom's stuff. The thing that your dad was saying is, if you have all your mom's stuff, you have to share with your sisters and brothers. I don't think that message is for you. You don't have her stuff. Your sister has her stuff. Exactly. I think that that would tell me that if your dad was present in a body on this earth, he'd be very distressed about your sister's decisions that she's making in regards to your mom, because that was his suggestion. And I was supposed to tell you, you have to share your mom's stuff with your siblings and so I think that's what he would want your sister to do mm -hmm. and I do feel that sense of like he's very sorry I think that must be why he's bringing it up like in that connotation mm -hmm. um, and then he wants to play cards with me so can I ask is your dad a card player or poker you? player sure yeah. was <laughs> Dealing out cards and he wants to like me to play cards with him that would just be what I was talking to you guys about before that that's the confirmation that I'm understanding him right and that that message is accurately um okay. translated for him he's also saying happy birthday whose birthday was uh May June or July we're in uh, yeah, May June or July he's singing happy birthday mine is coming up in July a happy birthday from your dad um Thank he said go you. get a banana split do you really like ice cream or is it an ice cream thing for your dad or who likes the banana splits? Oh, no, he was. Yes, he was definitely the ice key, ice cream king. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perfect. And then, Trish, I have to come back to you because Alan is roller skating around a roller skating rink. Why okay. is he at the roller skating rink? Did you go to a roller skating rink? Do you live by roller skating rink? Do you like, he's got me at the roller skating rink going around and around and around. Any connection to you for that? A roller skating rink? Mm -hmm. Ice skating rink? Roller, well, there's one downtown. But did you go to it or why would he be bringing that up? No clue. Is that connected to anyone else that we are here with today? For, okay, why is that connected to you, Kara's mama? <laughs> That's um, my mom um, belonged to the Shamrock Roller Skating Club. Um, when she relocated up to the Chicago area, her and her sister were both, I mean, they were skate backwards, dance, um, the whole kit and caboodle. <laughs> And is your aunt passed? Yes. Well, and she was. Just went together. So hold on. And she, it, it was because, be, I don't want to say because of her. It was her situation that actually created the conflict with my sister and I. I'm so sorry to hear that. I think she's sorry to hear that too. Oh, she, she said is. my sister was a pain in the butt. <laughs> Sorry to hear that too. You know, she's a spirit guide for you. 
She's very connected to your heart chakra oh, yeah. um, and to your past life selves. So I really feel like you knew her in a previous lifetime, but she is very doting on you and loving on you. And I want to ask you if you have diabetes. Me, no. Are no. you on the high end of normal for your blood sugars? No, actually spot on my, my labs just came back really good. Did she have diabetes? Um, diabetes does run on my mom's side of the family. I don't know if she did though. Okay, but you, when I, okay. That could be a confirmation that I'm understanding that she is the spirit guide that I told you she was if she had diabetes or if you have an awareness that it did run on your mom's side of the family. She's from your mom's side of the family. Yes. I yeah. would be able to take that. I, I have to just say, uh, Alan is like, um, every time he goes around the roller skating rink, that's a new person coming in. And this is, I thought at the beginning, like, let me just push that off. I don't know what he's talking to me, to me about, but I really think that he goes around and then another person comes and then he goes around and then another person comes. So Trisha is like my sister, wave Trisha. She's like my sister. So I know her family and so well. And so before we got on the, before I even came online, I was doing my prayers for our group session tonight. And I was telling Alan, you better come, you better help me out. Like, so I, I hope you're there. I hope you say some stuff. I hope you help me out. And he's just making a point to tell me right now that he is helping me out. And so I'm just supposed to share that with you. Um, okay, I'm glad your labs came back great. Do either of you have questions for your family that's present or are you looking for anybody else that you would like to connect with today? Um, I was kind of hoping for a friend of mine. Is that a female? Yes. Did she, I don't think her name was Barbara, but was her name Barbara? No, I didn't think so. And it doesn't feel like it is, but I'm, I'm, I don't know why she's showing me that name. You sure Hold on one that? second. <gasps> Go ahead. No, I, we, um, try to get her to see a holistic nutritionist whose name was Barbara. You're right. Oh, you're passed. trying to get the friend. Mm -hmm. to see the one that I'm talking. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I completely perfect. forgot about okay, that. Okay, yes. that's perfect. And and whatever she was doing, would she have been very nauseous? Yes. yes. Okay, she's all better. There's no. Is Barbara still alive? Yes. <laughs> okay, very good. I was I was concerned. I was like, why is she gonna? Is she trying to bring Barbara through? But no, she's not. So she probably should have seen Barbara if that's what she's talking about. But it's good because it links you to her. Um, she's feeling great, and she says you should see her hair. Oh, hair looks beautiful. Am I to assume that she had cancer? Yes. And lost her hair? Um, yes. Through She was diagnosed with um, a stage four pancreatic cancer just less than a year ago. And she did chemo and radiation and yes, lost her hair yes okay. well her hair is full it looks wonderful she's really like so excited like I you, she said tell her she should see my hair and she's like <laughs> very excited about it she looks young and she looks full like her face looks full it doesn't look drawn so I don't know how you know I don't know how bad she got you know my mom passed of cancer but she didn't really look like she had cancer because she passed so quickly uh -huh. my mom like she lost her hair and then she passed. And so when you saw my mom, it didn't look like she had that, you know, the very drawn. And yes. so your friend is saying like her skin is beautiful. Her face is full. She's not drawn. Um, and she's like doing this to you, Kara. So she's so, <laughs> is this like your pseudo aunt or like your aunt? Yeah. Aunt? <laughs> but she really is connected to you very connected to you spirit guide emotional support she's always vicariously living through you because you have fun and you like pizza yes <laughs> i, I want to know about the pizza you like that as your favorite meal like if you tell me i like tacos i'm going to tell you yes because i eat it every day literally every day <laughs> 
So I really like it, but you're, but either she really likes the pizza or you really like the pizza, but um, she makes you eat pizza. <laughs> they all love you. If you have questions for her, you can ask. Oh, I'm, I'm good. Just that she came through and that she's, ah. Uh, that she's doing well. It was quite a, sh it was very much a shock. Um, and needless to say that the time span in which things progressed was even more shocking. Um, she, she was only 38 years old. So it just broke my heart. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy she came through and that she's, I have no doubt <laughs> that she's doing good. In fact, the day, um, the day she passed, when I got the, when I got the notification, I stood in my kitchen, I had tears streaming and I yelled, find Nikki. <laughs> find well, Nikki. Right, and right. Gosh, I kept saying, mom, <laughs> the neighbors are going to think you're crazy. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. I want to ask if anybody here today has a birthday or an anniversary in March, or if the Irish March 17th, St. Patrick's Day feels very important to them or to their family for any reason. I have a March birthday. Okay. Does anybody else have a March birthday or a, a, a Irish thing? No? Okay. Um, Hold on one second. You are Gia, correct? I am. Okay. Can I ask you if you are named after somebody in your family? I am not. Okay. Named after a movie star that my mother named me after. I can actually take that. Um, and your mom is here on earth or she is in heaven? She's in heaven. Did your mom speak a different language or did um, your grandmother as, speak a different language? Because the lady here is saying that she spoke a different language, including English. Uh, my mother, as a young child, spoke another language. She did not speak it in her adult life, but, my, but her mother did. Okay. Um, and did oh, her mom also speak English? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to have to try to figure out if this is your mom or your grandmom. Um, which one of the two ladies was a seamstress or sewed, could sew clothing or just very good at that? My was grandma. That? Okay. And then would your grandma like my rosary? Yes. Um, do you have your grandmother's rosary? I do not. I have my mother's rosary though. Okay. Then I'm going to be talking to both of those ladies. I have to just be able to tell them apart. Who like to have pretty nails, mom or grandma? I don't really think either one of them. Was when one of them passed, was it important to have their nails look manicured? Um, this lady, I'm just trying to tell the two of them apart. No, but when my mom passed, um, we did make a comment how beautiful her nails were. Oh, that's your mom. Okay, that's great. I just, yeah, if, if, if somebody made a comment of it, there's a reason it would stand out, you know? Yeah. So then that helps me know that the the first lady that I'm talking to is in fact your mom. So she is present and then your grandmother and your mom is the one with the rosary and the nails, got it. Okay, and grandma is the one that was a very good seamstress or could make clothing and sew very well. I have both of them together um, and they are both presenting themselves. And I would like to tell you that exactly which one is which spirit guide, but I kind of feel like they can interchange. Like your mom is your principal and your grandma is your intuition, but then they can switch and your, your mom can be your intuition and your grandma can be your principal. And that tells me a lot about your family. Like you have a good family, you all support each other, even cousins and relatives. Like it seems like a very tight knit family. Is that true about your family? Mm, it was when I was younger, but not once we were older. The family kind of had a falling out part of the family. Oh, I think they're wishing that that would be back to, you know, where yeah. it was when you were younger, because what they show me is a very tight knit close family. 
and that everybody supports each other. I mean, like even mm-hmm. cousins and relatives and um, that's where they reside in their connection to all of you. They don't really identify any break in the family. Um, is St. Teresa important to your mom or to your grandma or to you? Mm, no. Okay. Well, I want to see if, do you have a medallion of some kind that's a religious artifact, that's a medallion that belonged to somebody in heaven? Because your mom yes. and your grandma are talking about it. What, what is it? Um, I actually have it hanging up in the bedroom right now that I'm in. Um, my grandmother gave it to me as a Christmas present years ago. And when my mother was ill, she wore it along with other crosses and different kind of stuff um, the entire time she was sick as hope and luck and, you know. And so, yeah, so it was a medallion from my grandmother, but my mother wore it for years. Okay, and now you have it. I know I have it. Okay, that is, the, it's kind of like why I'm, it like unites them or something. It's like all mm-hmm. three together it's really carries very healing and strong energy so they wanted to just reference that and they're so happy you have that um you can ask them any questions your dad is over there as well right and he's quieter uh he's a little quiet (laughs) maybe not but like your mom like if your mom's talking he's not really he seems quiet to me in comparison to your mom and your grandma they're like happy to connect and they're talking and they're chatting but then your dad comes in and it's more of a stoic feeling I have it's more of a I feel like I'm a little bit more reserved uh, when I'm talking to your dad no it may be my grandfather my dad um was a bartender in his past life and loved oh, yeah, that, stories. Wouldn't, that, that, that wouldn't describe him I'm talking no. to a man that is like stoic he's serious and like I almost want to like sit up straight when he comes in the room and like be on my best behavior. I think that would be my grandfather and my mother, my mother's father. Okay. That will make sense to me since I do have your mom and your grandma. Um, Your grandfather is a spirit guide of divine timing and protection to you. And do you know if he kept journals or if your grandmother kept journals, uh, any writing or any letters like that, that you would have that belong to your grandma and your grandpa or your mom because Um, wanting me to look at like handwritten letters from a long time ago if there was any my mother's sister would have all that she has she has everything from when her parents passed she took it she has everything so I don't know who who has everything my mom's sister has all of of my mother's parents everything out of their house. So I don't, I don't know if there was letters. Okay. I do remember opening up drawers and seeing lots of envelopes with pictures and possibly letters and stuff like that when I was a kid, but I don't know what they were. Okay. That, that, that will still serve as my confirmation. Mm -hmm. It's something that she's trying to make sure that I recognize. And it's supposed to tell me that your dad is here and that he is present with us. Um, when I ask your dad what happened, he says that is like I have pressure in my chest, but then I'm just sleepy. Did he actually pass in his sleep, but had a heart or lung condition? He had um, congestive heart failure. So I, I don't think he, that I know of, I wasn't with him when he passed. I don't think it was in his sleep though. I mean, he may have, he, he may have gone unconscious like the last 24 hours. Okay. I'm thinking that that's connected to the congestive heart failure and the tired in the brain because mm-hmm. of the oxygen. If you guys can hear my dogs, I'm very sorry. Um, can mm-hmm. you hear my dogs? No? Oh, that's wonderful. I have the filter thing on it that you're not supposed to hear my dogs, but my daughter just got home. And when she gets home, they like to give her a very warm welcome, which they are doing right mm-hmm. now. Um, okay, so that's good. And your, your father... Um, He's very proud of you and he kind of elevates you above your family, your siblings. So are you dad's favorite? Are you the one that took care of your dad? Like you're his ace in the hole. He can count on you or the family can count on you. And he is just so grateful 
for you mm -hmm. and for everything you do for the entire family, but for him especially. And yeah. so just thank you for that. And are you getting ready to go to Florida? Are you going on vacation? And is that going to be before August or September? Um, we just came back from a short road trip, but we are thinking about going out west. But that's not till um, late summer, early fall. Yeah, or end of August, September time frame. When mm -hmm. you're doing that, are, are you going to a beach? No. Okay, where at out west? Uh, we're thinking about uh, Arizona area. Okay. So a pool would be the closest thing to a beach. Okay. He's trying to get me to say that he's going on vacation with you, but he does take me to like, he shows me Florida. Um, it doesn't have to be Florida, but it does some element of what he's showing me has to be true. He did say August, September timeframe, if you're going mm -hmm. to Arizona there. And he lived in Arizona when he passed. So, okay. And he loved it there. That's probably why he's going. That makes sense to me now. And what's important for the month of March for your family? Oh, that's your birthday. My birthday. He's talking about it again. So, you know, he's happy birthday from your dad. Um, and he loves you. Okay. Do you have any questions for them? I do. I um, want to know if they have any insights into my sister or any. What's her name? My sister's name? Debbie. Okay. What, what area are you asking me to look into? Health. Her health. Is Debbie on the call today? She is not. No. I think that may be, I'm going to ask um, general and see if anything stands out. Otherwise, you can ask me specifically, and then I can go back and see what they say. Um, does your sister have a lot of digestive issues or anything that's happening to her in the middle section of her body? Is Currently, she yes. Yes, she's going through chemo. Okay, and where is that cancer located? Is that in the females, like over breast? Okay, breast so, cancer. Okay. Um, is she into her third round of treatment? Um, I think I think so. Yeah, okay. I think that would be correct. Yeah. And are they doing five? Well, no, this is actually the third separate try at different chemos. So she's been through multiple. I see. I guess that's my concern is that it's not being responsive to, okay. to uh, any chemo. Third, this is the third try. Third different drug. Third okay. different drug. Okay. This one feels like the most comprehensive to her. This one feels like it's settling in her better than the other ones. Is she finding that as well? It's not as uh, difficult for her to tolerate it? No, this has been um, almost one of the worst ones for her. Oh. Yeah, yeah. That might be better in a one-on-one -on -one session, but. Okay. No, he's still showing me three. How many of this kind does she have to do? Three rounds of this kind or I five I, rounds of this kind? I, I think you could be right. It could be three of this kind. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that for sure. Um, they just changed it. So I don't know how many doses they want to do of this one. So this is just a different drug. I don't see her like this. Like I was explaining earlier, when someone starts to Separate. point the journey that yeah. way, I do not see the distinction between the body and the soul. So the will is still there to live. Yes. And yes. there's something we can do about this because she's not in a separation of herself, which means that her soul doesn't think she's going anywhere. Okay. She does need more immune support. Yes. So there's a, um, a supplement out there that Trisha told me about when my daughter was going through things and Snook, her brother-in-law, the one with the brain tumor, lived six additional months until they took this product off the market. Um, it's called Peak Immune 4. 
And it's an excellent supplement for chemotherapy, radiation. It helps to shrink tumor sizes. It increases your natural killer cells by three times. Okay. And so it's, it's, it's an excellent immune support. Okay. And Alan just put that in my brain, by the way, when I was, when she was talking about that. So I thought you should know that as well. Um, and then did your dad like to do card tricks or did your mom like to do card tricks or did your grandma, anybody in the family like to do a card mm -hmm. trick? Like, Hey, pick a card. What any card, pick a card, anything like that from your dad? No. Uh, Trisha, anything like that? Pick a card, any card with Snook, your dad or Alan, because it's Alan. supposed to serve as a confirmation for what I'm understanding about the peak immune for, for her sister. Me, Alan. Did card tricks? Yeah. Okay. He's doing card tricks. Um, I'm going to take that to serve as the confirmation for, um, for your question about your sister. It, feels like this chemo is going to land in her root chakra. And that means that her body is taking in the treatment in an accurate way. Okay. Um, that's good information, actually, to, to see it go through her body and actually hit her root, which is hitting her physical body. So I do think her body is responding. I'm so sorry. It's really difficult for her. It is, yeah. Okay. 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 Kara Rojas, are you looking for a friend in heaven or an in law relationship in heaven? Because you have somebody connecting with you, and I can't tell just yet if it's male or female. Um, but they seem like their life ended abruptly, like it was a surprise that they passed away. Um, are, are you missing anybody like that in your life that's like a friend or an in-law, a peer person? Um, to yeah, it was a, it was a friend um, that passed away very And young. is that male? Yes. Okay. How did he pass? Because he, when, when, when I connect with him, um, I said, what happened? And he goes, I don't know, surprise me. So I, I, I want to know how did, what happened to him that he himself was surprised that he was in heaven? I don't know then because the one I'm thinking of passed away of suicide. Yeah, that's the guy. Um, can I ask if his suicide, if it involved his brain or his head? Yes. Okay. Um, when I connect with him, the gentleman that I'm speaking to is your friend. He comes in like that. He also comes in and, and makes me feel like I don't necessarily feel like an illness, but I feel like I died abruptly. And so he is also making me feel that. Um, when he does that, the impression is like from my throat all the way around the top of my head, like all of this is just very uncomfortable which is what prompted me to ask you about the manner of um, the manner of his suicide. But he is present. I'm supposed to tell you that he made it to heaven, but I'm also supposed to tell you that he was surprised. Um, when he tells me, when he shows me his initial vision, he shows me the vision and he can't believe he's still thinking. Like, I don't think he thought that there was life after this one. I don't think he thought that there was life after death. I think he thought once he ended it, it was over. He would not think anymore. So when he got to heaven and he did get right into heaven, mm -hmm. I don't feel any stoppers for him. He was a good person, mm -hmm. you know, and had a nice heart. And I don't know why he did that, but it wasn't like he was rejected. Like he walked right in and he was received and loved and welcomed. And it blew his mind basically. And he says, no pun intended, because he's also kind of sarcastic and funny. Is he that kind of personality? Yes. Yes. Um, and so then he says he got to heaven and he realized he still had thoughts. He still had an experience. He still 
had an existence and he could still travel and do like anything that he wanted. So he is here today to tell you, don't ever feel bad for him. He is doing fantastic. He loves where he's at. He gets to have all his own self without any tortured thoughts. Like they don't invade him anymore. I don't feel like this was retaliation against anybody. I just think that when he shows me his heart energy kind of lights up, I think he might've been an empath. And I think he might've struggled with emotions that he didn't know how to deal with that weren't even his to begin with. So I don't even think therapy would have helped him because I don't think a therapist would have known that he was picking up on the lady down the street who just lost her husband. And that's why he's depressed. They're not going to know that. And, and so I kind of think that, um, that's what moved him in that direction is he just didn't think he had clarity about himself, but he was just carrying pain or trauma or emotions of other people. Would this make sense to you about him? Because he's just really a nice guy. Yeah. I don't think he knew he was an empath. I think he thought he was crazy. I think he's like, the voices need to stop. But I think it was just all of this emotion that landed on him. And you're aware of kind of like empathy and how you can draw in emotions and experiences of others and kind of carry them. And if they're not yours, you don't know what to think about them. Then you start feeling crazy and he's doing great though. And he keeps wanting me to go to like the United center and dunk a three point basket. Dude, is he a very big into basketball? Are you into basketball? Is there a reason he would want me at the United center at a sports event that could go for anything at the United center, hockey, basketball. I think those are the only two that are over there. No. Anybody else in your family or in your life? Do you like that? I mean, I've gone to a basketball game, but no, it's not like, it's not a thing, a big thing. Yeah. Okay. Um, that would indicate like a cut of communication because that doesn't have anything to do with any other area of your life. Right. Um, how are you connected to him? Do you, like, did you love him because he loves you? It's my best friend's fiance. Okay. Is there anything connected to them that either deals with a Hawks game or a basketball game, any picture, any reason that he would want to like express that for her? I don't think so. I don't don't think so. Can I ask if she got a tattoo for him? His kid just did. Okay. His oldest. And is his oldest into sports, hockey, basketball, anything? He's really will not let this go. He keeps making me talk about this. And I'm asking him, like, what are you talking about? And then he's like, ask about who got a tattoo. So that's if his kid got a tattoo. Boy? It's a boy, yeah. Um, if he I'm got a tattoo, his, it could be something really, connected to him. His kids were really young when he passed away. I mean, maybe he's gone to like a, one of his kids' basketball games, or that's the last time he was with them. Well, did one of his kids play basketball or um, hockey? That's 15 years ago. Not hockey. No. Basketball. Yeah. So you know they played basketball? I, if it was, it was like. 15 years ago oh there is no time in heaven and yeah that's true that's his dad that's true. and that's how he's gonna connect me to him because he's the one that got the tattoo for his dad that's fine I think he might be yeah. just trying to talk about his kids then he has yeah. two children three two boys and a girl or two girls and a boy three boys three, all three boys okay yeah If you could tell them that he is present with them, and I think that's where he's bringing me to, if you know that his kids played sports or played basketball, and that is something that he really wants me to pay attention to. When we can't find that, I ask him more information, and he tells me somebody got a tattoo for him. So that does bring me to his kids. That would be his way of wanting his kids to know that he loves them. He's around them all the time. Mm Um, and who are you looking for? Is it a female that you're looking for in heaven that you were hoping to connect with you today? Yeah, my mom and dad. Um, because when I, um, I'm asking, I ask your friend, 
like he he stops talking after he relays that message okay and then I'm like okay but you don't want to say anything else and then he says well she's really waiting for her and then a female mm-hmm. comes into the room and that's why I asked you are you really looking for a female today and there is a lady here that is running up to you and hugging you and I could hang out with her and was your mom a cool mom yeah you know what I mean by that, right? Like you could, you would yeah. hang out with your mom. Like she's a cool mom. Um, because when she comes in, she acts like, I know she's your mom, mm-hmm. but she also acts like your best friends and you guys could go out together later on tonight. Like it feels like that kind of friendship between mom and daughter. Is that true mm-hmm. for your experience with her? Yeah. Do you have somebody's ashes um, in some kind of a a little bit of their ashes? Like maybe it was made into a ring or into a necklace or it's in a, 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 a heart or something but your mom is showing me like this little bottle of ashes you know what she's talking about yep so I have we made necklace charms of my mom and my dad and we have each of their ashes in them oh that's perfect she is mm-hmm. so loving that and she wants to yeah. acknowledge that so much um I mm-hmm. don't know if that's your dad but did your mom have like head trauma or did your dad have head trauma meaning one of them could have lost consciousness uh, loss, oxygen to the brain, Alzheimer's, dementia, stroke, aneurysm, anything that would have taken me away from communication or um, yes, consciousness. My... That, is that Was that your dad or was that your mom? My mom. Okay. So that will confirm then that I have your mom present with me. But um, I want to ask you if you have an, a bracelet of some kind that belonged to her or somebody else in your family. Um, it feels like a bracelet. Do you, did your mom ever give you a bracelet or do you have yeah, a bracelet that belongs rings. to her? I see the rings and she, she's like, I see the rings. I acknowledge the rings, but that's not what she's talking about. She's mm-hmm. talking about some, some like link bracelet or some golden bracelet. Did somebody else give you a bracelet? I did. Like she, who, who, yes. who, who's, what is she talking about? Um, we have like charm bracelets with all like um, it's again like my mom my dad like it'll say mom dad and and so does everybody have one of these yes okay they are thrilled that you guys did this with ashes with the bracelet (laughs) like this is something that they just want to both acknowledge your mom is talking way louder and way more than your dad he's just kind of nodding they feel like they stayed married. Um, their hands are holding together. So they did stay married, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then any reason I would hear engines, either motorcycles or cars, um, did they have a special car or a special ride that they like to go on? Because I My really feel like I'm going to go. I think they might be doing that now because actually what Alan again shows me is Matt's motorcycle and then shows me Matt. Um, And Hmm. so when, you know, when I'm talking to your dad and your mom, he is showing me that like I'm hearing the engine and stuff. And so that would just be, I think they're going on motorcycle rides. I really do. And your mom is rolling her eyes, but she loves it. I believe it. So she loves it. And that's what she says. Anybody going to the mountains? Somebody like to go to the mountains or are you going to the mountains? Uh, We went to North Carolina in December. And were you like up in the mountains when you went? Yes. Because your parents, like that's a heavenly location. Like, I don't know where you went, but it is like heavenly and they still hang out there. So I don't know if that was like, if they went because you went or if they had gone previous, but they love it. And there's like, that's part of their heaven. And that's what they're showing me, but they're showing me like up in the mountains. And I don't know, I know up in the mountains because I was stationed in North Carolina. I love North Carolina. And what I like about it the best is you can get to the beach or you can get to the mountains, Mm -hmm. you know, two direct, two hours in either direction and you're right there. And that's something that your parents are, um, talking about so I'm sure that they were with you but they like it so much they kind of hang out there um whose wedding ring got lost was that your mom's that got lost or your dad's that got lost I I don't know if you would call it lost but it would be my dad's okay my brother's ex-wife has it 
Oh boy. Well, yep, it's lost. Y'all ain't getting it back. But I can see there's a little bit of discrepancy about that. She should definitely <laughs> give it back um, if she still has it. So there's a little bit of, oh, they wish their rings were together, but it, it's not as significant, but they, they are aware of that, which means that they are showing compassion towards your brother, if that's his ex-wife or his ex-girlfriend, they, they're kind of sending that love towards your, towards your brother. So that would be an acknowledgement okay. to him. Um, okay. And they will also be here the whole time. Are you, did you, how long ago did your mom pass? Do you wear her clothes? I do not. I do, I do wear a shirt of my dad, so. Okay, that's okay. It, it has to be one of them because they're both confirmed mm -hmm. and connecting with us. Um, but I, I think you're, they get a kick out of that or they like that you do that. And um, they just love you so much. And they also want to, were you the caregiver for your mom? Uh, my dad. You were the caregiver for your dad? Most there, of all of us kids. There is... Um, such a gratitude for caregiving your mom is telling me that like thank you thank you thank you um so she's thanking you i guess for taking care of your dad but it's a very caregiving role and that is something that um that she's sharing with me and then are you going to vegas i am not who liked to go to the boats or the casinos? That was my grandma. Okay. She used to live in Vegas. <laughs> okay. She, <laughs> she's connecting as well. She's a spirit guide and guardian angel to you. She's waving at me. Have I spoken to you before? Have I spoken to your grandmother before? Um, not with my grandma, but I have spoken to you probably seven years ago, six years okay. ago. So your grandmother acts like I know her or she knows me or she's trying to give me some familiarity with her. Um, I do think that she is a spirit guide for you of intuition, health, well-being, and balance. Your mom is your principal person and your dad is very much connected to you for divine timing and protection. Do you run every day or do you go running? Are you a runner? I am not. Do you go to the gym? I do not, but I just started yoga <laughs> okay so I think I'm moving to another person who is a runner or likes to go to the gym or likes to work out who does all of that me is that Melissa no it's Marianne no it's Marianne it's I'm not being directed that way I'm 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 actually down in who is this? Melissa, can you, can I ask you anything about running or working out or doing marathons or anything like that? <laughs> yes, I work out pretty often. And running and marathons and all that, 5Ks and all that kind of stuff you do. All I, that? Used, I used to, I haven't competed in a while. Um, oh. I have run marathons though. And who are you looking for today? Is that your mom? Yes. There is a lady that just is wrapping her arms around you. And I'm assuming this is your daughter. Yep. And wrapping her, like her, her whole soul light is around you both. And it's really beautiful. She is a principal spirit guiding guardian angel to your daughter. Can I ask if your daughter is quite the artist or if there's a lot of artwork that's connected to her because grandma has like a whole display, like a gallery display I'm supposed to go into and look at. So can I ask about your creative stuff, hon, or your, your, your talent for art? Because your grandma is a principal spirit guide and guardian angel to you. And she's so proud of you. She has like those grandma brag books, which means that when she was here on earth, that is something that is very important to her. Do you know that to be true? I think so. Yeah. Okay. And do you have a nickname that they call you? Not your given name, but a nickname that you're called? By my mom or by... By anybody. Yes, I have. Um, my, my mom's called, oh, she used to call me Medusa. <laughs> okay. Um, or you might be, she might be saying doll baby. 
I think it's doll baby is actually, and that's your nickname or your daughter's nickname. Mine is my grandfather used to call me doll baby. So a lot of people call okay. me doll baby. Grandpa passed or mom passed of something in the chest, the heart and the lungs. Um, I think I don't, I think it was more of, um, GI my, for your grandfather, I mean, my grandfather, well, my grandfather on my dad's side, the grandfather that used to call you doll baby. Um, Molly, what was his ultimate cause of death? I think it was. He just I, had it, Alzheimer's and then he yeah. um, just kind of peacefully. Was he ever a smoker? Mm -mm. No. And you don't know if he had any lung breathing issue or heart failure? He could have had some. Oh, you know what he did because he had a pacemaker. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. And then is there a birthday or anniversary in October or November? Um, hit, hit my grandfather, my mother's is in October and my father, my grandfather's is in November. And okay, that's perfect. That just tells me that they are here and they are present and connecting with you. Uh, they love you so much. Uh, and can I ask you about your job? Are you very smart, very intelligent? Did you just change jobs? He's bringing me right to your career and he's like applauding wow. you about that. Your grandfather is. Um, I have changed jobs recently, about seven months ago to a very, to a much bigger job. That's very, um, very stressful and time consuming. And I'm now considering, um, moving on and making a big change. Okay. Um, well, he's very proud of you. Very proud of your job acknowledges the job change. I still think you're going to be there a little while longer. Uh, potentially through to the end of the year, maybe you would consider that around November, December. Is that what you're thinking? I have, was thinking earlier, but I also could. I've been trying. I've been wanting to wrap it up earlier, but I also could see me dragging it out a little bit. Molly doesn't want to hear that. <laughs> it could be a little bit longer than you originally. Um, suspect is what your grandfather is talking about. And um, are you having a hard time sleeping? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something that you're um, and this is your mom we connected with as well, correct? Mm-hmm. Your mom, I just need to make sure that's the same lady we just connected to. So just hold on once it is. So she's rubbing your hair and she's trying to sing you lullabies. And when she's doing that, it is based on a reference of you not sleeping well or not being able to stay asleep. So are you doing something mindless before bed? You have to disconnect your brain. Your brain never stops. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm trying to work on that less screens at night, more reading books or meditating. Yeah, you have to disconnect your brain because it doesn't stop. And that's what keeps waking you up. Like try to have an empty brain before you go to bed. Yeah. Not worried about anything. Just like think of what you're going to think about. And then just as you're thinking about it, let it go, let it go, let it go and see if you can get some better or more quality sleep. Your mom is a little concerned about that. She does keep trying to do that. Are you guys getting together for a family reunion? Yeah. And Molly, are you the one preparing it or are you the one in front? <laughs> are you the one getting all the plans together? Because as I'm talking to your mom and, and your grandfathers, they are, they're like, oh, ask Molly about the family reunion. So that's why I'm kind of bouncing to you to ask you about that. And that is something that they are going to be attending. When are you having it? Is it in July or August? July. Okay. So they are excited and everybody will be present and join <laughs> that as well. Um, and they are just blowing you kisses and telling you guys how much they love you. And um, your daughter, are you a dancer also? She loves to dance. Yeah, because you should be on a stage dancing. So if you're in class or classes for that or 
or you just watch a YouTube video, but you have a talent and that's something that your grandma is just bragging about more that you are, you're an artist and you're a dancer and you have a beautiful life waiting for you. And she's just tickled with you and so, so proud of you. Thanks. Um, Marilyn, I think I am talking to Zoe and I know Zoe. So would she be about nine or 11 right now? How old would she be? There, I can't hear you. Can okay. You? Uh, how old would uh, she, she be? Now? She would be 10 and a half. Okay, because she's got me right in between like nine and 11. And I know it's mm -hmm. her because every time she comes, she looks like a baby angel, but she has rainbow wings and then they always land on your heart. And that's how I know it's her. So I do have her present with me today. Um, did your, did her mom and dad, did they move? No. Who moved? No one. No, she's showing me a move. Oh, you moved. That's been four and a half, four years. Okay, that's moved. not what she's talking about. Do you know if they're getting ready to move? If they're no. thinking about moving from one house to an extra, if your daughter is? Because Zoe is showing me a move from one house to the next house. So it's got to be you and your husband or your son or your daughter's family. My daughter is estranged from us. We don't speak. I don't know what she's doing. Okay. And her, my grandchildren and her, um, Zoe's father is my, my son. And no, they, they won't move. They should have moved when she died at 16, at, mm -hmm. at 14 weeks. And they haven't. And so they will not move. Okay. Zoe's trying to make me think that they may move, that they're, that's the path they're leaning towards. So don't say anything to them, but let's watch over the next year if that's not something they start to think a little bit more clearly about. Is somebody, is- That is, would be good. It would be is good. Your grandson in high school? He's 14 and he just graduated from uh, grammar school. So he's starting high school. Okay. It feels like it might have something to do with school districts or high school. Really? Maybe they'll either move now or they'll move when he goes into college because it has something connected to his education. So they might move it would either be before freshman year or before he, right when he goes to college is where I feel like they're going to have a transition of home, but don't put it in their brain. It'll happen organically. And then when it happens, you'll be like, oh yeah, we knew about that. Oh, I can't tell my kids anything, what to do okay. or any, no. Oh gosh, no, I and wouldn't even bring sister, it up. Your sister is also present, but can I ask what her name was? Because she is, Mary Jane. Presenting, she is presenting herself young. So she still looks like she's like about 35. How old was she when she passed? We were 56. Okay. But um, she's, she's Mary Jane and I'm Marilyn Jane. And I would, everybody call me Mary and she was called Jane. Okay. So she's known as Jane. Okay. Well, when she connects, she, she looks exactly like you, but younger. She says, so you're identical twins or you're fraternal? No, twins? we're fraternal. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she, so you don't look alike? No, not until we got older. Then we, you know, the sag, the wrinkles, we started to look alike. I don't know. She looks a lot like you in the vision, but she does blow you kisses. And she also bows her head and she says she's so sorry about everything happening <laughs> with your husband. Um, and so she's there always as a support to help you because she knows you don't have a lot of support. Um, and she says, yeah, keep encouraging him to keep encouraging him toward healing. Otherwise he gives up too easy. So if it wasn't for you being the validator person, he wouldn't right. do as much as he's doing. So she's kind of cheering you on as you cheer him on. 
because he's not going to cheer you on. You're going to have to cheer him on, which is what you do. I know, it's exhausting. Yeah, but she's cheering you on as you're cheering him on. And so she's really acknowledging that and saying that that is making a huge difference um, in his life. He's driving now. It's been eight years. That's wonderful. That's a big deal. That is mm -hmm. wonderful. Congratulations. I, I'm so happy to hear that. Um, yeah. And so are they. I have to go back real quick to Melissa. Do you have a letter of your dad's in your wallet or do you have something of your dad's that you carry in your wallet or Molly, do you? My dad, uh, I have a weird prayer card that he gave me forever ago that's been in my wallet. Okay, he's talking about that and he- But my dad's alive. And who are we, what gentlemen here are we talking to? My grandpa. That's who we were talking Did to. Did make a connection with him earlier? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for you also, Melissa, did he connect? Perhaps on the nickname part. Okay, right. The right, nickname right, for right, him okay. was big for me. And is that your dad's dad? My mom's dad. Our okay. mom's dad. Well, you have a grandpa mm -hmm. then talking to me about this prayer thing that you have that belongs to your father. Um, save it, make sure to save it, always save it. That's what he said. Okay. Okay. And then I'm sorry, Marilyn, back to you. What questions do you have for them? And are you going on vacation with your husband? Only for a few days. It doesn't feel like it's like a week long thing. It's just a few days. And are oh, you going on You know, time? since this happened, I see no vacation in my future ever. I see no, I have no life. I see nothing nothing i'm trying to trying to get him to do something and he's a, he's still afraid to walk he he just doesn't and we never take the wheelchair outside so i think that what your sister is trying to show me is that that should be one of the encouragements to give him is to like go outside go maybe to galena or like go do something that would be, it could be calm. It doesn't have to be a huge thing, but you do need a break. You need to get out of the oh house. Oh my God, yes. Um, um, I'm trying to get him to drive to our granddaughter is at um, University of Iowa and she didn't come home this summer. She's staying there and working. And I said, it's a three hour drive. Why don't we go? And he absolutely says no, but he says Keep no to everything. You may really be able to get him to go in that direction because that really is, I think that might be it. And that's, so that's not too far. And that would be oh, a short trip just to like visit with her, but that could be know. where she's kind of encouraging, you know, go. And so try to cheerlead for him for that. And I want to ask if anybody has any questions for the family members and friends that we have connected with um, today. Yes, Kara. Oh, I can't hear you. There we go. Better? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just wanted, like, we're going through some stuff with my youngest, and I just wanted to see, like, what my parents are trying to help me with through that and like how what is your youngest them. name and age um ages they will be 14 next month um name seven um seven birth name seven like a seven but a z mm -hmm. birth name is ava are that is that two children you're asking about or one child it's one that is unsure about their gender and identity. Okay. And what's their birth given name? What's their birth gender? Uh, Ava. Female. Okay. Okay. Did she watch Stranger Things? Yes. What would you like to know? Um... I, I want to know, like, what path do they choose? Like, I don't care which one, but I feel like they're confused and they're not sure which way they want to go. 
and I just want them to be confident in themselves. And I feel like they're not, and that's holding them back. I, I, I can agree with you on that. One of the things that I got in a vision when I asked parents, I feel like a, she is Ava. Mm -hmm. That's what I hear. But then I also hear the outside world tells me that I shouldn't be Ava. That's concerning to me mm -hmm. because I feel like, I don't know if it's too much in our society, if the schools are talking about it too much or if now the norm for them to fit in as if you're not the norm. Exactly. And exactly. one of the um, things that I see in her energy is when you said her name is Zevin, I'm watching Stranger Things and I'm looking at Eleven. And Eleven in Stranger Things is very powerful. You know, she's really able to make change. You know, people are a little afraid of her. You know, she's kind of powerful. And I think that what we're looking at between Ava and Zevin is that there's possibly that she doesn't feel as empowered as Ava from the outside world, not you, not your family, but where, what's expected of our kids today. And so I think that she's struggling with that. So we can talk about that one-on-one, -on -one, or I can even have a session with you and her if she wants to, you know, or if they want to talk about it because there's something in there that's telling her she needs to have an addition to what she is. So exactly. she thinks- So that's what we things. say. Yeah. It's it, to, it, it to things fit in somewhere. When... Things, right, but it's, it's mm -hmm. not, so. Um, yeah. So they are right now supporting both aspects of her because your mom, is that your mom I was talking to? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and she's like the cool hangout yeah. kind of mom. Okay, yeah. One of the things she says is that we can embrace both of them. And some days she might want to dress like Ava. Some days she might want to dress like Zevin. Like, and that's totally fine because at some point one of them is going to win out. Right. And that will be the dominant expression of the self. That will probably happen around 17. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we tell them we don't care about their, yeah. like, at school, they don't know that right. they were Ava. Right. They like just they, they don't even want to talk about, like, transition and educate people. They just want to say, right. nope, right. this is who I am. Right. But then they do girl things. Right. And they, I just tell them, just be a kid. It yeah. doesn't matter, right? Right. Love yourself. Right. And that's my concern. I just want to make sure that we'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. And if she wants to talk more about it, I'd be happy to do that with both Perfect. of you and yeah. speak with all of you. So wonderful. Okay. Any other questions for family members today? I just have one. Okay, sure. I just lost a, a close friend. He died in my house unexpectedly. And um, just wondering he left his kids and I just got to know him. I've known him for like three years and I'm hoping he's okay. That's it. He turned into all of my life and don't What's know where. Uh, Al Kavinsky. Um, did he have a stroke? Yeah. He's doing fine. Oh, good. Good. Well, everybody else isn't. Tell him thank you. Yeah. Yeah. He said he's doing fine and he blows kisses at you. He cares about you. He gives you a very warm, like, hug, like, holds you into him. So that's And his boys, are, his boys are okay? Are there three of them? Two. Does he have a grandson? Uh-uh. They feel fine. I saw three. He might have a grandson on the way. I don't know because they okay. just got 
so I don't but, know. That might be, but I, I see three three grandsons and three that he's telling me about. And so he acknowledges them. So he's doing okay. He's in heaven. Okay. Any other questions for today? Yes, I was wondering if um, my sister-in-law has come through. What's your sister-in-law's name? Gina. Was she found passed away? She was. Did somebody find her? I'm sorry? Did somebody find her passed yes. away? Yes. Yeah. Um, because she said at the t everybody, it was kind of surprising. They didn't expect her to pass. Correct. Um, she's doing fine. She's drinking iced tea. Do you know if she made homemade iced tea or she really like iced tea, but she feels like she's sitting in a cafe drinking iced tea. I, I don't know about the iced tea, but it makes me happy to think she's very lighthearted personality. Mm -hmm. Because I just feel like she's a breath of fresh air. Like she's very lighthearted and just airy in her personality and feels very kind like that. Is that how she kind of was? She was. Yes. Um, she says you talk to her out loud. Yes. Like when you're talking to her in heaven, like you're yes. here, she's there and you're saying words out loud. And yes, I talked to her. Talk to her out loud. And she says she always tries to get you an answer. She says, did you see her in the mirror? I did not, but I do talk to her quite frequently. Her and my mother's ashes are next to each other. So, okay. Well, she loves you, adores you. You're a lot of fun and she does hear you. And she does always try to respond to you when you talk to her out loud. Okay. So she, it was a shock to her when she passed too. Not to her spirit, but yes, as she was passing, her human consciousness was like, oh, this is how it is. <laughs> and that's kind of, but she was so lighthearted about it. Like, I have no, I have no heaviness. I have no, like, torture. I have, like, surprise. Like, oh, so this is how it is. You know, kind of like a discovery, but not definitely anything that makes me feel, like, angry or sad or just, like, joyful. And any other questions for family? I have a question. Sure. Um, for my Auntie Lori, um, can you ask her if I can get my Crocs back? <laughs> Why is she laughing about it? Because what did you, what did she do with them? Did you send them with her? I, I bought her, well, she tried to steal mine. Okay, that's um, it. My feet. She's <laughs> laughing about it and it makes me feel like good luck getting them back. <laughs> so what did she do with them well we don't know they're at my <laughs> we don't know but i want to miss <laughs> okay i'm gonna ask her um i'm gonna ask her hold on one second oh she makes me she shows me a vision of my friend telling me oh honey those are in a goodwill bag goodwill bag and they're long gone she makes me feel like they're long gone. I don't think you're going to find them. Okay. <laughs> but she'll try to send you some money somehow so you can go get another pair. So that means you got to watch out for like the $5 you find on the ground. You know, you find tw a 20, you get that 20 in your back pocket and your clothes are already washed. Like there's going to be an unexpected money that you'll get. And then she's going to pay you back for it. And that, that should happen within 30 days is what she says. Thank and you. who like to play bingo? Does bingo mean anything to anybody here today? Because I have them, the people that we're all connecting with, they're playing bingo, but that's because somebody started to make them play bingo. So who likes bingo? Of your family that we're talking to, somebody had to go play bingo or why would they all be playing <laughs> bingo? My we used mom, to play bingo. Grandma. Who did? Kara? My mom, my mom and grandma. Used to go play bingo? Mm -hmm. And then for you too, Melissa? We did, but I was just thinking of a question in my head, but it was more numbers and okay. not we, bingo related specifically. We have, no, 
we can ask about that in just one second, but I just have to say that I think your mom and your grandma got this bingo game started because I'm hearing them all tell me bingo, but then Alan is in a pool alley, like a pool place, like to play pool. And he's like calling his numbers from like way over there. So he's also playing, but he is playing from the pool alley and not from where everybody else is playing. So he just wants you to know that. And he gives you thumbs up and says, he loves you so much. And yeah, you, you, you have to tell me when you find money for those Crocs because they're gonna, she's gonna get you the money for the Crocs. Like she's telling me for sure she's gonna do it. So it's perfect. Okay. And Debbie, are you walking a lot? Or are, are, have you been starting to go on walks because your family is going with you, but you're not going every day. You're going like maybe a couple times and then you don't go for several days and then you might go a couple more times. Are you doing that? Oh, here she comes. She's got to come over by you, Kara. No here she comes. I'm she sorry. Goes, I'm, like I can't work my phone. Um, yes, actually. Um, I, I actually saw the nutrition, the um, naturopath for nutritional revamping uh -huh. of my life because uh -huh. I was on way too many meds. And one of the things she said was start walking. So I started wearing my Fitbit because uh -huh. when you work at home, you don't realize how you don't move. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like my highlight was like 700 steps at the end of the day, right? So I'm doing at least 4,000 steps a day. <laughs> oh, they are so happy with you and like going on walks with you. And whenever you're doing that or measuring that, they're thrilled that you're doing that. Oh, that's, that's going to help everything that we were talking about, like health wise, like diabetes and blood sugars. Well, yes. And they're just super happy about that. Yeah. And I brought my cholesterol down 72 points since January. Fantastic. Whoa. <laughs> that is fantastic. You are very much being recognized for the physical fitness. And I love it. and so it's, it's like huge for me. Yes. <laughs> Trisha, I do want to ask you, are you considering selling the sure. house? Yes. Um, Alan is showing me a vision of the front of the house and he's looking at the roof. And he's like, we should just move. I'm not going to fix that. Can I ask you if there's any problem when you're standing in front of the house? Why is he having me look at the roof? Because he's telling me that because of the cost of the roof, that it's probably better to sell than to go through all of that. What is I it? just fixed the roof. Okay. So you fixed the roof. And now that you fixed the roof, are you considering selling? It keeps coming in my head. That's him. I think that's where it keeps. And is it popping in your head like randomly when you're not even thinking of it? Yes. I, I do think that that's him putting that in your mind. But it's and very overwhelming. It's yeah. So I'll help you any way I can. Um, yeah, well, Kristen's looking at North Carolina. Okay, I'll follow you. <laughs> I'll help you move. I'll follow you. We can rent <laughs> RV and take all 15 dogs down there, you know, but, yeah. and get them all down there. I've been anxious to get down there, but he is, he is looking in front of the house and there's like this concession telling me that he, it's coming upon that time. It's just too big. <gasps> Okay. It's too much cost. Yeah, there's a lot that has to get done. Yeah, it's it's the cost that he's more um, referencing and and thinking it. It's your best. Uh, it's the best path moving forward. Okay. Okay. Do you I'll have any questions looking. for him or for your dad or for your grandma? Ah. <sighs> We'll, we'll, we'll hook up later. Okay. Okay. Um, Marilyn, when is Zoe's birthday? Because she's dancing around in a birthday hat. 
Oops, you're on uh, mute. There you go. I think I can hear you. Can you? Yeah. Is it like her mom's birthday, her dad's birthday, her brother's birthday, or her birthday? She's dressed up in party clothes. I almost think it's her birthday, which would be last month, this month, or next month. Oh. Do they have a birthday in um, June, July, August, or May, June, July? Oop, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. How's that? Perfect. Good. Um, her birthday is in March, um, but we just uh, celebrate my my husband's birthday is in oh, June. Okay. I'm, I'm supposed in to June. say happy birthday. There's there's she's like acting like she's at a birthday happy party. Happy birthday, John. Yeah, and so that Zoe. Would be happy birthday from Zoe. Okay. Nicole is yes. my, my son, Brian, you said he's um, possibly moving. Is that going to be far? No, it doesn't feel like it's far away. It okay, just feels I, like I it's understand. Different, it, it feels like it's to a different school district. It's like if I needed to get to a different school district. It feels like it's related to... I think it's a different school in the district because he's like across the street from going to this other school and that's where he wants to go is the one and i that's where my wants son to go to wants one. my son wants him to go to the other school that's not across the street that that is across the street they're going he's going to a school that is old this other school is new okay. and that's what they want and it's in it's in the same community okay okay maybe all right all right folks do we have any other questions today for our family and friends in heaven thank you for your time today oh thank you for your time thank you everybody for sharing this thank you nicole thank you nicole thank, thank you. you thanks okay i hope to see you guys again in the future um, thank you Thanks, so much Nikki. for attending, and it really is a blessing for me to connect with your family and friends. I always feel honored that they would talk with us this way. So thank you so much, and I hope you all have a great rest of your night.